were taking a look at the Kali 76 FET compressor by Origin FX. I probably spend more time choosing and dialing compressors than any other piece of my signal chain. And this is true not only on my pedal board, but here in the studio when I'm mixing as well. I think that compressors, as I've talked extensively on this channel, are the secretly most important piece of your entire rig. Uh, dynamic control, weight, presence, and the ability to sit comfortably into a mix are all the result of great compression. And the reason I spend so much time deciding between compressors and dialing my compressors in is much like your distortion selection, your amp selection, or even your microphone selection for your guitar cabinet, the compressor you choose will impart color, character, and dynamic control in different ways depending on the type of circuit that you pick. There are times where you want something incredibly transparent, something that is completely out of the way and just offers a very subtle amount of dynamic control. And there are times where you want something that has character, swagger, and a statement all its own as a compressor. Because not all compressors are transparent, and sometimes you want something that has that statement. And the Origin Kali 76 is one of those compressors. This is modeled after the 1176, a famed studio rack compressor known for being as effective on guitars as it is on vocals and about anything else you can throw at it. And this is the new version of Origin's take on that classic compressor circuits. And right off the bat, you might be noticing something very specific, that the new one is a much better form factor than the old one. It is much less, these are metal so they, they clink. It is shorter and brought in line with the MEQ driver and the other pedals they've released over the last year or so. And I'm very grateful for this. This guy is a great compressor. Uh, but the form factor alone kept it off of certain pedal board builds. If I was building a mini board, this is taller than most mini boards are, causing you to have to kind of like let one side hang off the top or the bottom of the board, which can be dicey in terms of pressing your stomp or it can be dicey in terms of your cable management not getting kicked or clipped in some capacity. Another great update to this line is the removal of the kind of old big jewel that changed color when you were compressing. And instead, we now have these 10 LEDs that show you the amount of gain reduction happening to your signal, which gives you just a lot more accurate and a lot more information when it comes to kind of dialing in exactly how much compression you want. Because especially when you're using that dry blend in there too, understanding your signal compression can be as much about seeing it with your eyes as it is hearing it. And that sounds counterintuitive, but understanding the amount of reduction you are shooting for and the amount that you're actually achieving is really, really helpful. Of the big updates on this pedal, the final one, and maybe the most important one, is the fact that the old Kali 76 could be run at nine or 18 volts. You could run it at 18 for better headroom and a touch more clarity, mostly just related to the headroom. This now only runs at nine volt, but internally has a voltage doubler, but more than a doubler, running this thing at 24 volts, which means this thing has a ton of headroom in it, allowing you to not only use it on guitar at instrument level, but to also send line level signals through it. And that is true because we are currently compressing my vocal using this in an aux send rather than using an 1176 plugin like I normally would. There are some other really mild kind of like tweaks to the actual circuitry inside this pedal, things that add a little bit more clarity in the mid range and that kind of thing. But the spirit of the Kali 76 is still alive and well in this new version, enhanced in almost every single way. Thing that I love the most about the original 76 and this new iteration is that kind of preampy gain that the Kali 76 has. Like I said, this is not your kind of hyper transparent compressor. There's no tone knob or anything on this thing, but there is an innate character to a FET driven compressor like this that offers a kind of like low mid weight that uh, I've always really loved. I found when I was using the old one, uh, a thing that I would find myself kind of making decisions based on was the pickups I was using. Uh, when I was like an always on compressor guy, the weight that gets offered in by a 76 is a just absolute lifesaver for smaller, thinner single coils. This can be plucky and very kind of like 70s wrist action-y, or it can be there to create just 
limitless sustain in single notes, and it also sounds great on other sends, like my voice right now. So let's get into our sound samples. Let's give the new Cali 76 a listen, and then let's also give a listen to the Cali 76 for bass, which Origin was kind enough to send out as well. And this is kind of the confessional moment. Uh, I've been quietly using this on a lot of recordings recently and just avoiding having it on camera because obviously it wasn't publicly available yet. But since the split second that the bass 76 arrived here in the studio, it has been on my pedal board for my bass with the Benson Germanium Boost and the Origin Bass Rig Super Vintage, and I have not turned it off one time. It is an absolutely phenomenal bass compressor, and so we are going to get into that one as well towards the end of this video, so let's get into it. As always, before we get into our sound samples, let's talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my music man St. Vincent Goldie into the 29 Pedals Yuna, the Origin FX Cali 76 FET compressor, the 1981 Inventions uh, LVL, the Bondi FX Sick As, the Discovery Delay by Sir, and the Strymon Big Sky. From there we go to our amplifier, which is a Matchless Chieftain, into the Universal Audio Aux box. Uh, we have everything bypassed uh, except the 29 pedals Yuna with all the switches in the down position. This is what our dry tone sounds like. <laughs> So the way I want to kind of walk through the 76 is kind of like from start to finish dialing in a great tone and we'll kind of showcase the different routes you can go along the way. Um, so instead of kind of going here is min max of this knob, here's min max of this knob, we're going to start by setting our input and output levels and then we're going to set our ratio and then we're going to set our attack and release and then we're going to set our dry blend. But at each of those stages, we will go ahead and kind of like explore the purpose of having a wide range of sounds there, but we are going to use this as a process of building a great compressor sound. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. <laughs> As you can hear, we have nothing going into the pedal, and we have our dry signal uh, uh, bypassed by taking that knob all the way down, and so we've, we're getting nothing. So as we get into these settings, it is worth noting that I would say that the input and the output are probably the second most important set of parameters in a compressor of this style. Uh, I think your attack and your release are the actual most important in finding the right kind of dynamics, but getting the input and output relationship dialed uh, for the guitar you're using is pretty crucial in getting kind of headroom, but also that glue that we're looking for with compression. <laughs> You can already hear that compressor really starting to take effect. Less input, more output. And then as you kind of continue to run that, that input more aggressively, you will hear the noise floor start to come up because we are gaining up the input. And you can hear that squash and see that reaction in the VU meter right away. If we bypass the pedal and hear the dry tone version of that. Mm -hmm. 
and you can get really squishy with it. If you listen closely, you can tell because we are overdriving, not overdriving, but but hitting that uh, input too hard. Uh, you can hear that as the guitar fades, it actually gets louder. And that's because as that compressor is letting go, it is uh, letting the signal come back up above the threshold that we've like all, that we've like overcompensated to. So let's go ahead and bring that back down to what I would consider a nice kind of like reasonable level. That sounds good. Let's go ahead and play with our ratio. We have our ratio super low right now, so we're not getting a ton of compression, but you will hear as we kind of increase the, uh, the reduction ratio that you will hear a greater amount of that squish. Yeah, you can hear that, it's really evident. Versus something closer to a two to one. And then get into really squishy territory. And yeah, if you increase that input again, you can really kind of like find this insanely squishy place where you just get like miles of sustain. Let's take it back down to something that feels a little bit more useful. Yep, that's the sound. But as you can hear, that... that kind of bloom comes back out. Uh, let's go ahead and play with our attack and our release to kind of fine tune and refine the dynamics of this squish we're getting so that it doesn't have that pumping feeling to it. Something worth noting about our attack and release controls that may seem somewhat counterintuitive on first blush is the, uh, the fact that they are set up to be the same way that the actual proper 1176 is, which means counterclockwise is going to give you a slower attack and clockwise is going to increase the speed. So uh, usually you think less and more, but this is going to be slower to faster. So if we want a really fast attack, this is going to be our slowest attack.
and this will be in turn our uh, fastest. <laughs> And then likewise, that's going to be our fastest release right there. And this is going to be your slowest. You can see that, that reduction kind of drop off slower uh, when the threshold is crossed. So you can hear we're getting some of the transient of that pick attack at the outset, but not much because it's grabbing it pretty quickly. But we're not getting that really fast pumping release of a uh, of a fast release time. So like, if we set both of them to be very quick, you're getting what is essentially uh, compression as very, very statedly an effect. You're hearing that kind of pump and that, that kind of like inhale, exhale feeling of a compressor that really kind of breathes uh, with every pick attack. Whereas if you slow both of those down a little bit, especially the release, you're getting a version of that that feels more compressed overall because you are consistently sitting at a higher level of reduction, but you're not getting that really pumpy kind of disorientating, disorienting, disorienting, I think, uh, sound of compression where you can feel that kind of like inhale, exhale, the compressor grabbing and letting go. Uh, but you're also not getting any of those kind of transient, is nearly as much of that kind of pick attack transients. If you take that attack to really slow, slow attack and release can be good for letting those kind of like like pick attacks still like breathe well uh, and kind of have air. While also kind of like having a slow release so that the chord feels like it holds for a long time. For my personal preference, I tend to run a quicker attack on my pick. With a slower release. And my rationale for that is what we're about to get into, because right now I think we're at a compressor sound that I do quite like. It's punchy, it's got sustain, it's got a little bit of that control. I could jump over to finger picking. and feel like I'm getting my presence and my kind of like sound from that. So let's go ahead and take that and blend in our dry tone back into the mix for this.
see now you're getting all of the kind of dynamics and movements and kind of honestness of your right hand's relationship with your guitar. But you're still getting that compression. And you can showcase this by dialing out the output of our compressor. Let's even use it to make sure that we're getting like all the signal. And then as you start to bring that compressed signal back in, have that dry tone blended back into your signal, you have the option of getting more aggressive with those settings, higher ratios and everything else. So like taking that dry signal back out. We have this really squishy signal. Which is great for like sustained leads as well as like Add that dry guitar back in for the clarity. Versus. Volume difference aside, you can hear a lack of weight on the notes as you are hammering on, pulling off, tapping, picking. There's so many different kind of versions of attack happening on those strings right now that the bolstering and the and the and the uh, presence and the ability to bring those quiet notes up to meet the loud ones in the 76 is a life changer. And it's worth noting, I'm actually pressing the strings less hard with the compressor on because it's not requiring me to kind of do all that extra work. Add some delay in there.
So let's finish things up by taking a look at the base version of the compressor. Uh, even though the control scheme appears to be the same, there's some crucial differences that we need to take note of. You still have your dry, your out, and your input. Uh, and then down here, you still have your ratio, but you now have a single knob that goes from uh, fast attack, slow release at minimum to uh, slow attack, fast release at maximum. Uh, I'm a big fan of keeping that, again, fairly biased towards uh, sustain with my bass uh, versus punchiness. And then uh, you have a, a high pass filter right here, which basically is going to uh, exist as a high pass filter in the internal side chain of the compressor. And effectively what that is, is going to be something that allows your low notes to pass through uh, without triggering the compressor as aggressively, which is just going to let your bass breathe more effectively, and it's going to make it feel more natural as a compressor on this instrument versus on a guitar. Uh, we're going to do a much faster version of what we did in the guitar section, building a sound with the compressor, uh, keeping that dry out at the beginning so that you can hear what this filter is going to kind of accomplish. So let's get into it. So as you can hear, we have uh, completely bypassed that high pass filter and you're hearing those low notes really triggering quite a bit of compression. And then as you roll that up, you will hear the low end breathe more freely and trigger less compression while still allowing That's really handy if you want a fully compressed signal, uh, like maxing that out. We're gonna go somewhere more in the middle that still gives us a fair amount of compression on those low notes, so that because when we bring in our dry signal, that's going to give us that uncompressed sound anyways. down here with a really fast attack and a slow release. You can take it to the opposite, slow attack, quick release. Uh, finding a middle spot in here is gonna be really, really helpful for not losing your pick attack transients. but still fine tuning that kind of like longer release time. Mm -hmm. 